Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yes, uh, <clears throat> I've been a um, PyPy um, code developer for, for a long time, um, and um, I've um, had to um, think a lot about um, C extensions uh, while working on PyPy, and that's a, a bit of a problem for us. Uh, dealing with uh, extensions, and um, that's how the, uh, the HPy uh, project uh, came about. Um, so um, first, um, let's talk uh, about um, C extensions. Um, as uh, as you all know, they are um, central in the in the Python uh, ecosystem. Uh, of course, we we all love to um, to program in Python. Uh, but also, we all love having uh, available uh, powerful libraries that uh, enable um, all sorts of things, uh, including um, um, including uh, sending a, a telescope to space and uh, um, analyzing uh, the uh, uh, vast amounts of, uh, of data it uh, produces. And, um, that um, is uh, all based on um, uh, extensions like uh, NumPy, uh, which uh, uses uh, the C API directly, uh, but also um, you can think of um, libraries like um, Pandas or uh, Scikit-Learn, which um, use um, uh, mainly uh, Cyton and so don't uh, interact with the uh, C API directly, but um, use a tool uh, instead. But um, Cyton does uh, clearly rely on the C API. And you also have um, uh, other possibilities to uh, write um, extensions in uh, um, uh, statically compiled languages. Uh, you can use uh, C++ with, uh, well, you can use it directly, or you can use uh, PyBind 11, uh, you can write uh, extensions in Rust. But um, all of that um, uh, relies uh, on um, the uh, C API. Um, so, um, by the way, I, uh, I'd like to know uh, in the room, uh, how many people have used the uh, C API directly? quite a lot, and uh, how many people have um, written um, extensions in, uh, in general? Uh, about the same. Um, so, um, um, to, um, to go back to, to PyPy, um, and um, I mean, in, uh, in general, in the, uh, in the Python uh, ecosystem, uh, there's um, I guess one big drawback of Python and uh, its performance. That's why we uh, reach out to uh, different languages um, when we need uh, performance. And there is, uh, there are a lot of attempts to um, get um, better performance. So uh, you have uh, PyPy, um, and uh, but also um, Graal Python, which has a somewhat similar approach to, uh, to PyPy, that completely um, uh, re-implement the, the core of Python. Um, and then the problem becomes, um, how do you deal with the C API? Uh, because uh, you're not even using C in, uh, in the core. So uh, in that case, you have to emulate the um, C API, um, and um, that's uh, uh, that's quite difficult, uh, as I know. Um, but um, you also have uh, other um, alternative implementation of uh, of Python that uh, started off C Python. So, well, there are forks of C Python, so it should be easy to. Um, um, to keep supporting uh, the C API, except that obviously they fork to change things and they want to change the core of the uh, interpreter. So um, 
then uh, they, they have to um, make a trade-off between keep supporting the CAPI or um, doing the changes uh, they want to change. And um, uh, another uh, way to, um, uh, to improve performance is uh, inside uh, CPython itself. Uh, there is uh, nowadays a lot of focus on uh, performance. So uh, you have, um, uh, of course, the faster CPython project um, which, um, well, has to, uh, tries to change uh, the internals, but it's CPython, they can't uh, afford to uh, break the existing um, uh, extensions. And, um, and uh, another um, project to improve performance uh, is uh, this time to deal with um, um, con uh, concurrency, allowing um, several interpreters uh, inside the, the same process. But um, that runs into um, uh, issues with the CAPI as well. Um, so um, let's talk about uh, the problem, the, the problems with um, the, uh, the CAPI. Um, it's, um, well, first of all, the, the CAPI is uh, quite old. It uh, uh, pretty much goes back to the, um, the origins uh, of Python, uh, and um, it kind of um, grew because people started uh, using the internals of, uh, of CPython to um, to write um, uh, interesting extensions, uh, like um, such as the uh, well, the ancestor of, uh, of NumPy started, I think, in uh, 1995, um, and um, over time the um, the CAPI got uh, formalized, but um, it um, remained close to uh, its origins as just exposing. Um, um, directly exposing the internals uh, of CPython. And um, because of that, the, um, the layout uh, of, the, um, of the built in objects uh, is part of the um, uh, CAPI. Like if you have, um, uh, if you have a, a float object, you can directly access the um, and um, the member that uh, contains the value. And, um, well, you're not supposed to do that, but you can't prevent extension writers from doing it. Um, also, um, the uh, CAPI uh, started at a time where um, um, concurrency wasn't uh, even an issue. It was even before uh, uh, multi-threading. Um, and um, it, uh, when you um, call a function from the CAPI, um, it um, often um, reaches out to um, a global uh, interpreter state. Um, things uh, should as, um, I don't know, you can uh, do imports and touch uh, sys.modules or uh, you um, depend uh, on the um, encoding. Um, um, and um, the, um, and uh, also, because there are so many extensions out there, every time you make a change, you break someone's code. Um, and to go into um, uh, a bit more technical details, um, the fact that um, um, the API is based on pointers, uh, everything is um, basically a pi object star that uh, you pass around. Um, 
And uh, because of that, uh, well, you have to be able to dereference this thing that uh, you pass around. Um, and uh, well, if you uh, had a bit of uh, interaction, you could do interesting things, um, such as um, pointer tagging, uh, where you um, uh, like encode directly into, um, uh, where you use the, um, um, the low uh, bits of a pointer to um, uh, encode the different uh, information, or you could have, um, uh, you could uh, represent, um, say, um, lists of um, floats or integers uh, by storing just a value instead of uh, having to uh, always have um, uh, a full-blown uh, object um, present. Um, and um, um, and um, like I said, it's hard to change. There have been attempts to, um, to alleviate that, but um, so there is a stable ABI, um, but uh, it uh, has uh, some issues. It's not uh, used a lot, uh, and I guess that's um, because it uh, uh, exposes too little, like people want things that aren't uh, in the stable ABI. But at the same time, it's not that stable because uh, there are actually um, a lot of things that shouldn't have been part of the stable ABI but uh, got put in by accident. Um, and um, the uh, big uh, issue and um, uh, kind of the uh, central motivation for, for HPI uh, is that um, the um, reference counting semantics of CPython are um, um, like crucial to, um, uh, to use the, um, the API. Um, so um, let me um, uh, explain uh, the issues with ref counting specifically by uh, contrasting it with um, uh, the uh, approach used by uh, PyPy, but uh, also uh, Gripe, Python, which is to have a um, tracing uh, garbage collector. So in, um, <clears throat> with reference counting, you, um, every single object keeps track of the number of references to it uh, that exists. And so uh, you know that when um, this uh, ref count goes to zero, you can um, delete the object. Um, <clears throat> by contrast, the tracing GC uh, just uh, records the, um, um, the edges in, uh, in the object graph, uh, records which um, objects refer to which. <clears throat> and um, uh, and figures out that way uh, which objects are alive and which ob objects are dead. Um, and um, uh, the, um, the issue with um, reference counting is that um, basically every time you uh, want to read an object, you have to write to the, um, uh, to the ref count field. So, that, um, that turns uh, every uh, read into uh, a write, which is uh, bad for, uh, for cache, um, which causes um, uh, a lot of issues uh, once um, you start to think about uh, concurrency. And that's basically the, uh, the reason we have the guild, because we need to change this ref count every time um, we, um, uh, well, we need to, to have a lock, so instead of locking every single object, we, um, um, uh, we have the, the, global, uh, the global lock. So, um, what uh, is HPI going to do about that? Um, so, um, let me uh, start by um, 
a bit of history. Um, the project um, um, started um, um, three years ago, exactly. Um, so it was in, <coughs> in Basel, at the last uh, EuroPython. And um, uh, a few uh, PyPy developers uh, uh, had, uh, had gathered to discuss again about the, the, all these uh, issues. And um, uh, after talking with um, some uh, CPython and Cyton devs, we decided to, um, um, to create HPy. So um, <clears throat> since then, uh, we've had um, a lot of interest from uh, the developers of Graal Python, uh, which have exactly the same, uh, same issues. Um, and um, we, um, um, uh, well, we uh, uh, agreed on uh, this uh, set of goals. So get rid of uh, reference counting, but also um, make sure that uh, there is no implicit state, um, make the global state uh, explicit. Um, but um, uh, at the same time, uh, we want it to be, um, we want to make the transition as easy as uh, it can possibly be. So um, the uh, new uh, API must um, not have any overhead on uh, CPython. Um, and uh, we also want to provide um, new possibilities, such as having um, um, what we call universal binaries, meaning you compile your extension once, and it works on uh, all the interpreters and all the versions. Um, and um, also, we have um, um, tools to, to help writing um, extensions with, the, with um, HPy. Um, and um, so, um, to accomplish uh, this goal, um, on CPython, there are uh, two modes. You can either have, um, well, there are basically two versions of HPy uh, in CPython. One which is basically just a set of headers that translate um, into calls that translates um, H calls into HPy functions to calls into um, um, CPython functions. So you only need it, uh, you only need HPy at compile time, and the result is an extension that uh, behaves um, like uh, something you'd, you, you'd written against uh, the CPython API. But the other mode, um, um, in the other mode, uh, you have um, an HPy runtime that um, um, implements the same uh, ABI on all uh, implementations of Python, so that the, um, the extension um, only needs to call into uh, the runtime, and depending on um, the um, uh, interpreter, will have, uh, you'll get a different implementation. And um, with um, this approach, we can also provide a special runtime that uh, offers uh, improved uh, debugging. So um, here's what um, um, HPy looks like. Um, well, very um, simple code. You just include the HPy.h. Um, well, there's, some, uh, there's a macro to simplify uh, the boilerplate. But, um, and um, this, uh, in this API call, well, you see it's uh, almost like, in, I think in uh, CPython, it's pi number absolute. Um, and uh, instead you write HPy absolute. Um, and uh, all functions in HPy take an HPy context uh, argument, which um, represents a global state, and um, and these HPy uh, objects, which are the, uh, the handles. Um, so the handles um, are um, 
uh, individual references to an object. So, um, meaning that you can have two handles pointing to the same object, but they will uh, um, be different, uh, different objects, have different values at the sea level. Um, and um, now, uh, instead of uh, doing an ink ref um, on an object, you duplicate the handle. And um, with, uh, with that, it means that you can match precisely um, every time you um, create a handle or duplicate it, you need a matching uh, HPy clause. Um, and um, that actually makes um, uh, programming a, a bit easier because you can clearly match where the object is created and where it's um, when you don't need it anymore. So, um, yeah, going a bit into details, um, there are three kinds of handles. The uh, HPy are only for uh, short-lived uh, references, so it's for the local variables, we use um, something different um, for um, storing objects, and that um, is uh, really helpful for uh, garbage collectors. Now the context, uh, it looks um, like this, so you have um, uh, a place to store private data. Uh, well, version, we don't uh, use it um, at the moment, uh, but um, uh, the context stores a bunch of um, built-in objects, or, well, handles built-in objects, and it stores the whole uh, ABI um, of, uh, of HPy. Like, there's a whole bunch of uh, function pointers, and all, um, all of HPy is implemented by um, um, calling this context. So when you have a function in, the, uh, in HPy, it's really doing uh, CTX, uh, arrow, um, CTX model create. Um, and um, also the, this context can uh, implement a debug mode, um, which, uh, by the way, doesn't uh, need to be recompiled. It's, uh, the debug mode is just a different context. So um, you just need to say uh, HPy debug uh, equals one, to set an environment variable. And then you have uh, debug information on, um, uh, on um, leaks, on um, uh, uses of uh, invalid handles. Um, and also, um, same thing for uh, memories that's returned uh, by the interpreter. Uh, and uh, because we have uh, like only one place where the uh, handle is created, um, we can know if there's a leak, we can know precisely which, um, uh, which handle uh, leaked, um, which, um, so which function is responsible for the leak. So, um, to um, convert um, existing extensions, um, you have to um, first, um, the one thing you do in uh, staying with CPython, um, it probably only supports heap types. Um, so, uh, you have to do that first. And then uh, it's, uh, um, straightforward translation of uh, um, type specs and model specs to HPy. Uh, and then you can uh, actually uh, do the port, um, which you can do um, uh, function by function or method by method. Um, and uh, we've um, built uh, a few prototypes uh, inside um, uh, HPy, uh, so uh, we have uh, uJSON, matplotlib, uh, which uses the Kiwi solver, um, and an attempt at uh, NumPy. So, um, to conclude, um, we um, 
uh, HPI is not ready yet, and uh, but uh, it will be soon, hopefully. Uh, we still need to uh, to implement all of the uh, myriad functions from the C API. Um, we also need to um, to solve um, the packaging problem because uh, at the moment these uh, universal uh, binaries are loaded, loaded using uh, a hack um, in distutils. We need to be able to uh, provide wheels. Um, we're still on uh, version 004, so we are not uh, actually uh, ABI stable, but the mechanisms are in place. Um, and uh, finally, uh, another thing uh, we'd really like to have is um, allowing people to just write uh, HPI extensions without knowing it through Cytem uh, and possibly other uh, tools. So um, thank you for listening. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we have time for one or two questions. Please ask your questions at the microphone. Uh, yeah, hey, uh, nice talk. Uh, you have said on, on slide 5.1 uh, that, that people could, that uh, the problem with CPython is, for example, that you cannot really do uh, pointer tagging. So my question is, what kind of information would you actually store in the pointer tag? Uh, because, well, that could be, for example, types, right? But uh, you may have, like, tons of types, and then the, probably you will not have that much space for um, Yes, uh, well, it um, um, depends uh, on the uh, implementation. Uh, actually, uh, this um, pointer tagging is um, already implemented in uh, um, the um, HPI version for Graal Python. Um, so they uh, have, well, uh, when you do a pointer tagging, you, um, well, you know that uh, your pointers are yeah, aligned. I mean, you, know, you basically take a pointer and you take some of the bits that are really unused and you use this, yes. you use this to store some information. Yes, but uh, you have, uh, if you, um, uh, you can store um, a tag on the uh, last few bits, so say the, the last four, uh, um, and um, uh, no, four, uh, three. Um, and uh, if the, uh, the low bits are not zero, then you interpret the rest of the pointer uh, as something, so you can store uh, a lot of uh, integer values. Uh, you yeah, can even store I floats know, if my, you want. My, my question and like, specifically is about like, what kind of inf information are you storing there? Because you said that HPI is using actually it. Uh, it's uh, used on, uh, on Graal Python, so I don't know all the details. Uh, but uh, I think they uh, can uh, store um, integers, floats, and um, some well-chosen um, uh, built-in objects, like non-true, false, uh, this kind of thing, and that uh, uh, already um, yeah, uh, removes... Check, uh, check for those values faster than... Yeah, yes. That makes sense, thanks. So we have time... Sorry. We have time for one small question, short question. Maybe you can uh, discuss the other question with him later. Uh, HPI targeting only Python 3.x, or does it cover 2.x as well? Uh, sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, does HPI only target Python 3, or does it target Python 2? Oh, uh, it's only uh, Python 3. Um, at the moment, it um, supports, uh, I think, from 3.6 to 3.10 on CPython. Um, on PyPy and Graal Python, uh, so only the last version. Yes, well, thank you very much. Please give him another uh, applause.